Welcome everyone to Electric Coast Channel and I'm back with another video and I've been doing the same thing I've always been doing you know working on EF stuff you know and um, right now I'm at the uh, at my workbench and I'm um, still sculpting more figures you know I've gone on a uh, a retreat if you will no, I didn't go anywhere. I was here at Electric Coast Studios working on my sculpting. I wasn't tweaking any bases. I wasn't running any plays. I wasn't, uh, no, I wasn't uh, doing any play analysis or anything like that. All I was doing was, was working on my sculpting. So I'm going to show you this picture right here. This is my workbench when I got everything cleaned up and organized a while ago so here working on some figures and um, basically I intend to start you know pouring molds on these uh, these sculpts I'm doing you know and if I sound like I'm in a if I sound like I'm inside of a bucket if my head is in, if, if my head sounds like I'm in a bucket it's because I have a uh, a helmet on. I got a protective shield on, over my face. Because when I use my Dremel tool to uh, sand one of my figures, uh, here's the, uh, the drill bit right here. And you can hear it running. I use this. I use this bit along with a few other bits like this one and this one here. These two bits right here, like this one. Use these. I use these other bits to do some detail work on the figure. You know, like I got these two guys right here. This figure here is a is a B nut figure. I intend to make it a lineman, or it could be a linebacker, depending on depending on how it turns out. Um, but this figure right here, I'm really focusing on. Let me get my clip on here. This is a uh, a Haiti Repro figure, and I'll show you that figure in a moment when we go over to the uh, we go back to the desktop and look at some pictures. Um, this is these are the a few of the drill bits I use, the Dremel bits I use to sand my figures to work on them at least. And here's another uh, Dremel I have. I got two Dremels I use. This one is for cutting. This little disc right here is for cutting. So we're gonna put this one away and move these two bits. So I'll move my face a little bit into the camera a bit. You see my face shield right there. So I use that because whenever I sand my figures, the plastic and some of the uh, clay dust flies back at me. So I gotta keep my face covered. I also have uh, some uh, magnifying goggles on under this helmet as well. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit of sanding here, and then we're going to move over to the uh, desktop, and we're going to look at some pictures. And then after that, we're going to go over to the game table and do some, uh, we're going to run some of these figures, all right? Let's go. Take my Dremel. Need to get my hands in position. I can't be too close to the camera and do this. I'm going to wheel down some of this plastic. That's mainly what I use this drill. That's mainly what I use this bit for. Is to uh, take down some of this plastic. If it's too much plastic in one spot, I use this tool to uh, bring that plastic down a bit. So this is what I've been doing, you know, for the past, you know, you know, three or four months. I mean, I've been sculpting for about two years, two and a half years now. But I've been, but I noticed that some of my work wasn't as as precise as it should be. So that's why I took the, uh, I took the uh, sabbatical, if you will, or the hiatus. Because I wanted to work on this. I wanted to focus on this more. And when we get over to the computer, I'm going to show you some of the figures of some of the figures I had done. I'll hit that a little bit. 
And this guy, by the way, is in the pictures, all right? Along with these other guys sitting right here. You'll see those momentarily, all right? Well, I'm not going to bore you too long with this. I got to say in this one, I'm going to do the same thing with this guy right here. Where I'm going to bring down his, uh, his shoulders. This is the area where the arms and the head is going to be at. Arms are going to be mounted under here and under there. And of course, the head is going to be mounted in the center there. All right? Let's turn off this dribble. All right? Besides, I want to get from behind this helmet. It's kind of warm in here, although the helmet is open under the neck area and behind the ears. But I got my headphones on top. All right? So uh, give me a moment to... Uh, Make, make some adjustments. We got to switch over. Got to get up from the workbench and go over to the uh, to the mixer and switch over to our computer. So again, what you're looking at is the uh, is the uh, an image of my workbench before I started doing more work on it. I cleaned it off and I went and got that. Uh, that mat and that box of uh, stone axe you see right there is the clay that I use. Give me a moment. Gotta take off this helmet and take off these magnifying goggles. As a matter of fact, let's switch back and give you a better look. These are the magnifying goggles that I was wearing under the helmet and this was the face shield a better look at it right here I was wearing this while I was talking to you guys at the workbench all right so I'm gonna hang this up you know it's a lot to do in this hobby depending on how deep you want to get okay now let's get normal here. Let's get uh, <laughs> in position here. <clears throat> um, so yeah, this is a picture of the workbench. Switch back to the computer. Yeah, that's it. So this is a picture of the workbench right here. Magnify it a little bit, and you can see I have my uh, the Dremel the Dremel drill bit is here. Got a couple of figures there. And the uh, and uh, two spatulas where I place my uh, my my clay on. Let's close this one out. Uh, move closer here. Move to a different picture. Yeah, again, hobby tools for, uh, for sculpting with putty. Right. Then we're gonna go over to this figure right here. This piece here. All right. What you're looking at right now is a new sculpt that I was starting for my electric football San Francisco 49ers. And this is what the clay looks like when, when I apply it to the figure. All right, you can see the hole where, I, where, where, the, where the neck and the head is going to go. And here on the sides, you know, that's where the arms are going to be at. I want you to keep in mind that, what this, that this piece right here, after I finished working on it, that piece ended up like this. So this is my new uh, electric football Dre Greenlaw figure. He's on the 49ers. So after all the sanding and the setting, this is the uh, completed ver. This is the this is the, this is the completed piece, if you will. And I got other figures that I'm working on that's going to come out just like this guy, all right? Um, I use, I had these 49ers for about a year and a half now, two years, I believe, and uh, the 49ers had, had changed their uniform a, a slight bit, and what they did was they had two stripes on the sleeves, and if you look at uh, number 85, on the left of the screen, that's uh, my uh, George Kittle figure. He plays tight end for the 49ers. Um, 
I could leave them just like that and just play with them if I want to and just use it. But I wanted to update these 49ers. So if you look at the uh, guys in the middle, the players who don't have numbers, I basically took the uh, decals off, right? The old decals, took those off and uh, prepared a new, a new slate, a new surface, if you will, for some new, uh, for some new decals. So you see the two, you see my, my the uh, num number 57 in the backfield, Dre Greenlaw, he's back there. And the other guy is a guy named, last name is Hafanga, I forget his first name. Um, let's see, I, th I think I have a picture of, of, the, of that individual player, uh, Hafanga. I think I do. Yeah, here it is, right here. Now this is the uh, other new 49er that I, that I made. If you look at the figure on the right, You'll see that figure is the original figure when it comes out the out the bag. This is the uh, classic uh, Fab Five figure. That's the figure that was that we used as as a defensive back long ago when we were you know young in this game. Well, I modified that figure to make it look like the figure on the left. So this is the new figure. He's going to join my uh, my 49ers as I update. Let's see. Also got some uh, muscle work on the team of Eagles. We'll go here. We'll get this guy. All right. This is my uh, AJ Brown figure. All right. This figure is uh, was derived from a game a game day figure. The figure you see on the right is what the figure looks like when it comes from the manufacturer. The manufacturer is a company called Game Day. So I took that figure, and what you saw me do on the table over here, for a, a little bit on the table, you saw me uh, sanding on a on a piece. Well, this figure went through that same process. You saw the clay figure, then you saw me on the table sanding and grinding down some plastic. And what the ultimate goal is to make the guy look like is to bring out a football pose like this guy you saw here and the uh, other players that you saw earlier. Uh, I want to show you this picture also. Remember those two uh, spatulas you saw earlier on my workbench? Well, this is what they look like when I bring, when I, I put my clay on it. And I add a little water to it, and off of that, I apply the clay to the figure, okay? Uh, let's go back to that pose here. So I take the putty off the off that clay. I mean, I take the clay off the uh, off the spatula, and I apply it to the the figure, like you see here. So each figure I get, each figure I work with, this is this how this how it starts off. All right. Let's see what else we got. Oh, I got a couple of other uh, eagle figures in here too. Got a. Uh, Miles Sanders. Go back, yes, the front right there. That's the running back for the Eagles, Miles Sanders, number 26. I'm making a team of Eagles as well. Um, I had some older Eagles that I'm updating that I'm, I'm working on. I was I took from that team, and I'm going to add them to this team I'm making now. And I'm doing the same thing with them that I did with the 49ers. I'm, uh, I'm disassembling those sculpts. And I'm rebuilding them because what I, the way I sculpted those figures two years ago was different than what I'm doing now. So what I'm doing now is a little bit more detailed. The, the detail is more in the interior of the figure. I'm hollowing out the figure more, right? And I'm, I'm more, uh, I'm more precise on building the shoulders and the neck area. I'm getting better at doing that. That's the A.J. Brown figure again. That's the back of him. And if you notice, the, the font of the name right here, Brown. Well, this actually is not the uh, actual font. I got some other decals with the actual font, with the uh, correct font for the uh, for the Eagles. I just used that Brown because at the time when I made the figure, I showed it on Facebook. I had the name Brown from a different set of decals. I think I took that name off, uh, I believe it was the, 
think it was a, a sheet of Jaguar, a sheet of uh, Jacksonville Jaguar decals I had. So I used that name to complete the figure. But guess what? I'm going to scrape that. I'm going to scrape that name off, and I'm going to get the actual uh, font that I have now for the Eagles, and put that new font on. Let's see what else we got. Uh, let's see. Here is some other pictures here. The uh, Miles Sando. This is the uh, Devontae Smith pose. Um, he's. I got his uniform painted, but I don't have his decals on him yet. Let me uh, see if I can find that real quick. Um, right here, I grab this one. Yeah. Here's the. Uh, this is the. Devontae Smith, and this guy on the left right here, he's going to be a tight end, Dallas Goddard. So those are the other two Eagles I got. So these poses are uh, a little more detailed. I uh, did more hollowing. I did. I hollowed out the uh, interior of the figure a little bit more, and uh, I was a little bit more careful about the uh, about the shoulders. And I'm also I put the black collar on the Eagle jersey here. You know, I mean, really, to do all of that is not necessary. I'm just, I just want to put it out there. But uh, this video is basically about, you know, uh, customizing an electric football figure. You know, you can take it, like I said, I've said in previous videos, you know, you can take the figure out the bag as is, paint it, put decals on it and go and play but if you want your figures to have a unique look if you want your team to look different than every other guy out there you know this is what you have to do you have to customize your figure if you want to look different but if you don't care about that if all you want to do is just play then you can just take the figure out the bag as is and I'm, when we go to the game table I'm going to show you you know straight up figures plain figures you just paint them Stick a number on the back of the chest and keep it moving. You can do that if you want, if you, if that's all you want. But if you try to look, if you try to look sweet, and that's what I'm into. I'm I'm into I'm into looking good. So I want to look different. This is what I do. And another thing, this is artwork also. So if you see, let's say if you see, you know, five coaches, right? There with their eagles. All of us got it's say all of us got eagle teams. And all of us got customized eagle teams, right? My artwork, the way I customize, is gonna look different than the next guy. Right? You know, when you see a person's work enough times, you'll be able to say, Oh, yeah, I seen that paint job before. Or oh, I seen that uh that that sculpt job before. And that looked like so-and-so, so-and-so. You know, like with these particular eagles right here, the way I painted them, the paint that I used, it goes on. When it dries, it go, and with the, with the clay behind it, it has kind of a used look. Like it's kind of like a, a rustic type of look. Right? This paint that I use on a jersey, on the jersey was uh, accompanied by, was that the paint is by a company called Vallejo. So that their paints, when I, when I put it on the clay, it has that look, it has that that, that rustic kind of, you know, dry crack look. So you got a little bit of cracks in the paint behind, on top of the clay. All right. Let's see. That's um, the, 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 the lineman that I wanted to show you. Okay. Remember that figure that I was, uh, that I was using the Dremel on at the workbench. Well, that's it's this guy right here. Let me uh, draw it out. This guy right here. I intend to use him as an office alignment. Those figures I pointed to on the workbench. They all that was my office alignment. So um, this figure, the figure on the far left. Clear my ink. Matter of fact, let's change the color so it'll show up a little bit better here. Let's get some uh, yellow going on. 
There we go. Yeah. So this figure on the far left right here, <clears throat> he's a little more, he, he's further ahead than, than the, uh, than my guard figures. And for those of you, for those of you who don't know what a guard is, your guards are the interior guys, this guy and this guy. All right. So the center is already done. I just got to take him off his platform and uh, change and put him on a different platform because right now that figure is too heavy with that platform. Um, that center figure, by the way, is a Reginald Rutledge figure. All right. Uh, the other figures, um, the guard figures are the Haiti Repro figures. These figures right here. And the offensive tackle figures are the B-nut figures. So I took different figures. And of course, this is uh, Reginald Rutledge from footballfigure.net. So I've taken various types of figures and I sculpted on them to make different poses. All right, so this, this offensive line is a is, is a melting pot of uh, manufacturers across the hobby of electric football. I mean, I could have put a game day figure in there, but I got my game day figures on this particular team. This offensive line, by the way, I'm going to put them on the Eagles. They're going to be Eagles offensive line, by the way. So my skill position figures, like my receivers, my backs, my tight end, they're game day figures. The linemen... I brought them out. Um, I used the Haiti Repro figures, the B Nut figures, and the Reginald Rutledge figures. Um, let's clear our ink. I got some other poses here. Now, I'm going to bring up. Oh, by the way, when I was talking about my AJ Green figure and the uh, Devontae Smith pose, well, this is what the guys look like um, before I put the paint job on. So after I finish sculpting, I prime them, put primer on the uh, over top of the clay, and you get a clean white figure. So like I said earlier, the, uh, the ultimately what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to pour molds. I'm going to start pouring molds of these poses, and that way I'll be able to make figures faster, and I'll take that one step out. The step of having to sculpt the pose, I'll be able to stop doing that piece and pour the mold for a figure. And when it dries, go right into painting it and decount it. So I'll be able to make my figures a lot faster. See, with me, um, I'm very versatile in this hobby. You know, not only can I play the game, I can build my own team. I can build my entire team from the ground up. I uh, tweak the bases. I customize the figures with, with, uh, with sculpting clay and decals and paint. I can play, build teams, right? All, my, all by myself. I don't need help in this. So doing it that way, it takes a long time. You know, like if I wanted to save time, of course, like I said earlier, I don't have to do all the sculpting work. I can just take the players as they are and paint them and go, right? But that's not enough for me. I want to do more. So the next step is to start now pouring molds, all right? So again, this is the, uh, the A.J. Brown figure and the uh, Devontae Smith figure you saw earlier. Here's the, uh, the back side of them. Let's see, got a side picture there, right? Then we go back to the picture you saw earlier. There they are now with pink, okay? Um, Miles, Sanders, Miles Sanders pose is right here. Before I paint him, there he is, all right? 
and the uh, the new figure that I did, the uh, the Dre Greenlaw figure. Let's bring this picture up right here. Okay. This pose over here, this guy right here, that was the Dre Greenlaw pose that I made two years ago when I first put these 49ers together. All right. The pose is fine. Nothing wrong with it. It looks okay. But after a while, I kept looking at it. I said, you know, I'm going to change that pose. And then when the 49ers, you know, made that slight change to their uniform, they went from two stripes on the sleeve to three stripes. And for those outside the hobby, when I'm talking about the sleeves, I'm talking about this, this area right here. You see, there's two stripes right there. That, that, that's the uniform the 49ers had last year. They had two stripes. The colors didn't change. The pants color didn't change. The helmet didn't change. All they did was add one more stripe to the sleeve. Now, again, I could have kept them just like that, just played with them as they were. It wouldn't have made a difference, right? So when I started updating my 49ers, I said, you know what? This is the time where I'm going to make a new Dre Greenlaw pose. Because this, the pose on the left really wasn't, I, I wasn't feeling it anymore. Okay? So the new, Dre, the, the new pose is here on the right. You see? You see the difference? Both of those figures are game day figures. So the other pose on the left, I'm going to take it apart eventually. And it's going to become somebody else. Right. Because really, that pose out the back is really, it's really supposed to be a, a defensive lineman. Like a defensive end or a defensive tackle or something like that. Let's clear ink here. All right. What else we got in here? What else we got? Uh, let's go here. I'm going to show you this. Still more on that Dre Greenlaw pose. Now again, the, the figure you see in the middle is the first Dre Greenlaw pose I made. And you see the two halves of figures here. This half and a half. Well, the one, the piece on the left are the legs. And the piece on the right is the torso. So if you go back to the to the uh my workbench right this is where I cut the figure in half I split it I also have little hand saws too that help me to you know make finer cuts where I don't cut too much material off the plastic well to achieve those cuts you know like I said I use the Dremel tool and I got a little hand saw also so I separate the pieces and if you look at the uh, the legs on the left you'll see a hole in there. So I use the Dremel to take the plastic from the inside of the piece. And if you look at the piece on the right, you'll see the hole in the middle. And that's where I drill, that's where I'm gonna, that's where I place the shoulder, that's where I place the, uh, the clay for the neck so I can mount the helmet, all right? And when it dries, again, I can use my Dremel and I can chisel away any excess plastic in that area, forming a neck. All right? So these pieces right here made, they were the parts that made the, uh, the new Dre Greenlaw pose. That pose right there, you see? That's a side view of the new Electric Football Dre Greenlaw. Now, of course, there are other players on the team. So I got to do what? Well, I can only do one player at a time. I got other guys too, all right? But I use this one because this I use this figure for this video because this was the the latest figure that I had done. And quite frankly, I, I'm proud of the outcome of the figure. I'm proud of how it how it came out, how it looks. I think I did a good job on it. Um, yeah, so again, this is the new Dre Greenlaw pose. 
And if you look at the shoulders, like I said earlier, she did three stripes. Well, the, the real life 49ers, this is what's on their uniform now. That's the only thing they changed. So that slight change, right, I kept up with it. And again, I could have kept it with the two stripes on my old 49ers team, all right? <coughs> Let's clear this out. Uh, what else we got? Okay, we got some uh, other poses here. Um, okay. These poses I made about a year ago. But what I did with them was before I started, before I started to paint, I looked at them again and I didn't like some of the some of the parts of the poses. So I had to go back to the workbench and put the Dremel tool to them. And I had to sand down some uh, some parts. And I changed a helmet on this guy right here. I did shoulder work on him again and I gave him a different helmet. These guys are linebackers. They might be linebackers on my Eagles. They might be linebackers on my 49ers. As a matter of fact, this guy, this guy, this one, and this one. I was going to put them on the Ravens. I was going to make some Ravens. And uh, they were going to be the four linebackers for the Ravens. Their names escape me right now. But, um, yeah, I was going to make them those. All right? So what I may end up doing with these guys, these guys may be the first figures I pour my mold on. In fact, I may pour my mold on this guy. It's going to be the first guy I do. That's a Haiti Repro figure, by the way. That's a Haiti Repro. Uh, I believe it's a uh, linebacker. It was a, the linebacker pose or the uh, the, the uh, offensive lineman pose. I forget which one it was. But I may start my, 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 uh, my silicone pour on this figure right here, the one you see circled in yellow. All right, <clears throat> let's see if we got some other other poses here. Uh, yeah, I got these three guys. Yeah, that's right. These guys are going to be Ravens also. This was going to be Calais Campbell. That's what I was thinking when I made that pose. I was going to make him. No, no, no. He wasn't going to be Calais Campbell. This guy over here was. So I think Calais Campbell plays on the, on the left. So if you look at him from behind, that guy would be the left defensive end. But at any rate, they, they, these three linemen and those four linebackers, I was going to make them Ravens. I wasn't going to put them on the Eagles or the 49ers. All right. So again, these guys, I'm going to uh, pour molds on these ones too, especially these, these, these two. This nose tackle right here. I'm still not sure about those shoulders. I'm going to work them shoulders again. All right? Because this, this, this figure here in the middle, this is the... By the way, all three of these figures are game day figures, by the way. All right? This figure right here in the middle was is called the Sioux figure. It's when game day made the figure... They made it after the Dama Kunsu. So he calls it the Sioux figure, right? Well, when I sculpt on these figures, I got to be very careful how much material I put on that figure because that's probably the second heaviest figure that Game Day sells. Next to, I think it's a figure that he has called the Freak. That one's a really heavy figure. So when I sculpt on it, I got to be careful how much material I add to the figure because we want to keep the figure under four grams, all right? And we're going to talk about that when I go over to the game table, all right? Okay, yeah, so these three figures were going to be, they were going to be Ravens, they were going to be my defensive line, my nose tackle, my defensive hands, and those linebackers you saw previously, they were going to be on, they were going to be part of the Ravens as well. I hadn't started doing corners. I hadn't started. I hadn't 
started on the cornerbacks and the safeties yet. All right. So let me erase this. Let's see what else we got. I'm trying to give you a, a good look of what goes on with these figures, you know, when we make our teams. Now, mind you, every coach doesn't do this. Every coach doesn't customize figures, okay? Going back to what I said earlier, some coaches take the figures out the bag, straight from the manufacturer, paint the figures up, put decals on them, and keep it moving. All right? Um, let's see. That's uh, A.J. Green and Miles Sanders together. You know, and by the way, the bases that they're standing on are from a company called ITZ, right? They sell the, pretty much, they, they, they supply the entire community with the bases that we play on. At Tudor, they sell bases as well, but you'll see a lot of these ITZ bases on figures across the hobby among a lot of coaches. And I, for one, I have, uh, I, got, I, got, I got a stockpile. I have a stockpile of their of their stuff, you know. So I'm because when I am tweaking, I tweak. I go from one base to the next, you know. But in this case, I'm doing sculpt modification right now on my figures. All right. So again, that's AJ Brown on the left, and that's uh, the Miles Sanders figure on the right. Okay. So now, this is what we're gonna do. We're going to go over to the game table. I need to uh, move a few things around. Uh, the, the camera, well, the camera over the table, I got to move it back. Um, and the cable and the camera that was at the, uh, the workbench, I got to move it out of the way. All right. So give me a moment and I'll be right back. You got to stay right here. Okay, I'm back, and we are at the game table now. Turn off that lamp over there. Um, so now what I'm going to show you is move these goggles out of the way again. These are my magnifying uh, glasses I use. This is a pair of them. You want to get these, and these ones are really good because there's a power switch on here and there's a light right here mounted into the goggles and you recharge the goggles via this USB port right here on the uh, on the glasses um, I got another pair also that I use they take AAA batteries um, but these ones I really like these ones alright and uh, again this is the uh, face mask I wear when I start sanding on my players. Got a little bit of dust up here. See, and sometimes the dust gets all on the mask. You know, help protect my face. So wear protective gear when you're using power tools. Yes, although these figures are only an inch and a half, maybe a, and sometimes a little bit shorter. You know, when you start grinding on that on that uh, on that clay and that plastic. All that st the plastic kicks kicks back in your face, so you need that uh that protective shield. Now, the figures you saw on 
the on my on the computer. Let's see, you got my cable here caught up. Give me a moment here to uh, reroute this uh, headphone cable. Stand by for a moment. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. The figures you saw, the pictures you saw were these guys right here. We're going to set them on the table for a moment on the game board here. And this, by the way, this board is the uh, my, my Tudor uh, 620 model board. All right. In my uh, my preview, my, vi my video I had done a few months ago called Board Nostalgia, it talks about the history of this board. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Bring these guys down. All right. Now that we got these poses done, you know, I've already run test these figures already. So I already know what they're going to do. I just wanted to show it to you. Right, because after you add weight to the figure by sculpting on it, it's going to change how the how the player would run when you mount it on a base, which I have here. These two right here. Now, these two bases are the bases I use to test the stability and balance of my poses after I sculpt them. Now normally I, I run the figure when the figure before I put the the uniform paint job on and the decal. Because if the figure comes out unbalanced, right, it's gonna be counterproductive to have painted the guy. Only to have to go back and sand everything back down again, open the figure back up and redo something. Okay? But I already know these guys run decent. Okay? So I use back these figures up for a moment. These are two of the bases I use to, to run tests my figures after I you know, sculpt modify, okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm going to run, let's say, Drake Greenlaw figure real quick, all right? Let's get these guys off the board. And we're going to weigh the figure as well. So, got the scale right here. We're going to weigh this guy. And we're going to do that. Uh, afterwards, let's put this over here. I'm going to move some things around. Hit the power button real quick and have it already turned on. Set that right there. So, we're going to do, I'm going to take the Dre Green Law pose. All right. And I'm going to put it on this base right here. Now, it's a linebacker. So I don't care if the guy runs all the way up the board. If, if it does, it's, it's okay. It's good. But because he's going to play my left, he's going to play linebacker on the left side. So I don't care if he runs up the board, right? Let's zoom back a little bit. I'm going to run him to see how he goes. Okay, not bad. He ran about 45, ran about 55 yards before going out of bounds over here. Okay, so I'll put him right about here. I just want to keep him in the frame because if the figure was out of balance, it would either stand still or it may turn really early. It'll loop almost. It won't even go down the board. No, it won't go down the board in any way at all. Right. Okay, on that base, if I was to use him on this base, he would play the right side. But I intend to have him play on the left side. I'm going to tweak an entirely different base for this figure. All right? So, again, this was a run test to test the balance of the pose. All right? So, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this base, this blue, this blue ITZ base. This is a clear ITZ base, by the way. And the body, as you can see, the center is cut out of it. And we're going to talk about that in a moment, too. So we're going to switch him over to this blue base. And we're going to run him on this one. Let's see how he goes. All right. Let's see. 
a little bit quicker on this bass. I got the motor turned down a little bit lower, but it's still, it's still good enough, right? It's a little higher, all right? Yeah, this blue bass is a little bit faster. I had this blue bass on my uh, San Francisco 49er uh, Richard Sherman uh, figure. He was playing corner before he retired. Well, that bass is still going back to a cornerback. All right? So now, I got the Dre Greenlaw figure. I'm confident that it runs well, that it's balanced. It runs well, which I already knew before the video. All right? That's why it's painted. Okay? Like I said earlier, I'm not going to paint a figure not knowing if it's going to run right. Okay? So we're going to put that guy right here. And yeah, I forgot the uh, the scale has a timer on it. And if you don't use it, the, the scale will turn off. So let me set. Let me adjust this camera a bit because I want to put you at the on, I want to put you on the scale so you can see the numbers here. I'm going to zoom in. Let's bring it back a little bit. So I, I want to share every aspect of this hobby with you. Okay? Ah. Got to zero it out. Okay, so we're going to take the Drake Greenlaw pose while on this blue base right here. And we're going to set him on the scale and see what he weighs. Okay, guess what? This picker comes in at 4.06. Right? Because the, the lighting on the, on the scale, the lighting here is causing the scale to reflect a little bit so let me see if I can move the light out of the way yeah, it's still there but you still can see the 4.06 guess what that figure is too heavy it's too heavy so let's do this but I'm not gonna go back right from this figure this figure is done okay I am going to take that base off we're gonna go and get our clear base where the center is cut out of it this clear base basically is the same base as this blue one except it's blue right so by cutting out the center of that base we reduce weight let's see how much he weighs now now it comes in at 3.56 you see so I know that if I use this blue, if I use this type of blue base, right, I would have to basically cut that center section out in there. Take take my hobby knife and cut that excess plastic out, and that will bring and that will bring our weight within specification. Okay, but let's do this. We're gonna try a different base. We're wearing our guys now. Here's another base by ICZ. This is a uh, a bullet base. Why? Because you see the round. You see the front. It's rounded. Okay. So we're gonna put him on that base. Let's see how much he weighs. On that base, he's three point eight seven. Okay. So with that, I know. What, what kind of base to give the guy so that he'll be within the uh, within specifications of the uh, TOC rule set. You see? So we don't have to uh, worry too much about you know uh, outfitting this figure with a base. Alright? Let's move him out of the way. And now we're going to go get our AJ Green. Since we're here, since we're here at the scale, we're just going to just, you know, we're going to weigh these guys. All right, it's the AJ Green pose. 
All right, we're gonna stay in focus here. All right, we're gonna put him on. We're gonna put him on this bullet base and just see how he how he turns out. Okay, he's at three point six nine. All right. Now, some of you may say, "Well, what's the best base to use?" That's one, that's, that's the number one question across the hobby. Back it off a little bit. Some people will ask, you know, what's the best base to use? Well, there is no best base. It depends on you and how you tweak your base and how you coach it and you play with it. All right? The guys in the hobby who still play with, who play with tutor bases only, and they compete. They match up against other coaches with, two, with tutor bases, with traditional tutor bases, right? You know, me, I'm more of a... I'm a variety kind of guy. I mostly got ITZ bases because I do admit, you know, these bases are awesome, all right? I digress from them. So now, we got that blue base again. We're going to put our AJ Green figure on there. We're going to stand him up. Okay, on that, with that base and that figure, he comes in at 3.90. Okay? All right. Now, of course, with this uh, base with the hole in it, I got the, uh, the middle cut out, right? He's definitely going to come in lighter, but we just want to see. 3.39. Okay, we're good. All right. Now, we got other figures we can run. You know what? I'm going to bring in my, uh, my Hafinga pose. All right, we're gonna bring him in. He's playing safety, it's number 29. He plays safety for the 49ers, you know? So, okay, we're gonna take AJ Brown, put him down, and we're gonna put the Hafanga figure on here. And remember, this figure was derived from the traditional uh, Tudor Haiti Repro figure, okay? We're gonna put that down, and we're gonna go get this blue base again. And we're going to weigh the Hafanga figure. Set him on a scale. And he comes in at a whopping 4.06. <laughs> wow. Now, I could have done, now based on the weight of the figure and looking at the shoulders, I could have spent more time uh, taking some more plastic off the shoulder. That would have definitely helped with the weight. Okay. But still, we know that if we simply, again, like I said earlier, we're going to take out the center portion of this base right inside here, cut it out, like you saw with this clear base right here. We know that the figure will drop weight and it, and it will be within specification. It's 3.56, right? So now if I go to this to this bullet base, right? This bullet base right here, which is all, again, which is by ITZ. I got a clear dial in there. Alright. If I mount that on there, it comes in at 3.86. Okay? So we know what we have to do to get the figure to uh, meet weight specification. All right, so I'm gonna take the scale away. We're gonna turn this off here. All right, I'm gonna set this off to the side. I don't need this anymore. We're gonna put our scale up, up here. And uh, we're gonna take, uh, let's see, let me get AJ Brown figure. All right, and we're going to run him a little bit. We'll put him on a clear base, and again, that that base and these bases that you see here are not the actual bases that are going to be on the players. So let's uh, move it back a little bit, and move the camera up slightly. Right about there. 
Right. So now we're gonna we're gonna run the AJ Brown figure. Just our lighting a little bit. So we're gonna run the AJ Brown figure and see how see how it go. Okay, good, good. He ran 80 yards. And again, well not again, but the prongs here from time to time they get out of alignment. So you know with a little bit a little bit more tweaking. Sometimes you have to go back and tweak a little bit more on the base to uh to get it to conform. So sometimes I digress again. Sometimes if you if a base sits for a while, the plastic will, you know, come out of shape. Again, you gotta go back and touch the base up a little bit. Let's run them again. Okay, so on that base it runs about a good 75 to 80 yards, but for the most part, the figure is balanced and it runs well. And another specification that has to be met with the TLC, this blue box right here, it's called the combine box. <coughs> Uh, let's see, me, gotta dust it off a little bit because these little corners I haven't been touching it. I've been grabbing it like right here and down here in these little corners. You know, dust had been formed, had formed in there. So basically, with this device, it measures the height and the overall width of the figure, including the base, all right? So the top of the figure, which is in here, top of the uh, the box in here, and the size of the base in there, right there, right? If the figure touches, if the figure is, if any part of the figure is touching the top or the sides, then that figure is not eligible to play in tournament play. So the way it works is, you have the figure on the base. Let me uh, get the, get the base to show up a little bit better in the camera. Because that's blue, this base is clear, and that base is blue, right? So, that base green, it show up a little bit better. So, we'll put the figure and base together. And we'll put the figure inside the box. Let's zoom in. So, you can get it just now. You see the, the head of the figure... It's not touching the top, and the arms are not touching the side, the hands, if you will, all right? And the base fits inside the slot right there, okay? So let's get our Drake Green off pose, all right? And I want to get another pose also I want to show you. I want to bring this defensive back up here, all right? slide that back and we're going to get the Drake Green Law pose and we're going to put it inside the box and see if it fits all right now see the hands the base the top of the figure it fits and here comes the real test because my defensive back figures, they're taller guys, all right? We're gonna put him on the base. And we're gonna put him inside the box. How's it look? The hands are not touching the sides and the helmet is not touching the top. So in regards to weight and size dimension, my sculpt work comes out just right. Not too heavy, not too big. So this this figure, these these model these sculpt modified poses, I can use them in tournament play. And earlier I talked about some old eagles I had. This is one of the poses right here while I'm, I'm while I got it while I'm here at the game table. These are some of my old, uh, my first eagles I sculpted when I first started sculpting. 
Oh, and this is uh, my Boston Scott pose right here. Back it up a little bit. This is Boston Scott, my Boston Scott pose. I'm going to redo this figure too. Number 35. Yep. I'm redoing all these guys. This is uh, my Kelsey offensive line in my center pose. Right, I'm gonna redo him, which you already saw. As a matter of fact, I'll move these guys out of the way. It's the same Reginald Rutledge figure, except this guy, he has a little more shoulder. He has uh, shoulders, better shoulders, and a different helmet. You see? Move back. So all these figures are being updated. Um, got a couple of linemen in here. This is an offensive lineman from the Eagles. On number 71. Uh, his last name was Peters. I forget his first name. He went on, so he got traded to the Cowboys later. But this guy's getting changed too. Those linemen I showed you earlier in the pictures. Those five linemen and the piece you, and the piece that you saw me that you saw me uh, sanding on the workbench, those guys are gonna be the new my new equal offensive line. All right. So, so yeah, this is how this is what I'm doing now with uh, my EF teams. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will be, I definitely, I definitely will be back with more, uh, back with more stuff to show you. I'm still going to be diagramming plays. Um, the last tournament that was in North Carolina, I didn't make that one. That was at Bull City Brawl back in November. Couldn't get there because uh wasn't feeling too good that week. So I had to stay home. Um, so yeah, this is the Electric Coast Channel. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoy all the videos in this channel. And that's all I got for you today on this video. I'm Mo. Thanks for watching.